This, I know, is where everyone's going, can this man have lost his mind? Every word I'm telling you is true. This is the heart of the secrecy. How do you convince people there's another species to hate? Now, they actually took this from the playbook of Adolf Hitler. The way they conditioned the population. How'd you get, how'd you get a very, I mean, in the 20s, in the early part of the 20th century, Germany was the apex of culture, erudition, progressivity, uh, intellectual pursuits, et cetera, and so on. How do you get that population to devolve into this horrific community that could engage in the Holocaust and, and, and World War II, the way that happened? psychological warfare. So the psychological warfare masters that were involved with the German attempt at Nazism got pulled into the OSS fence that became the CIA and they reside today within this unacknowledged transnational, deep national security state. So that's exactly the problem we're facing. It isn't pretty. Yeah, I've tried to summarize it in these three or four hours as best as I can, but it's the truth. Now, as Gloria Steinem said, the truth will set you free, but first it might piss you off. And I think, you know, a lot of people, when they learn that this is what they've been involved with, uh, people who've done research on this subject, get quite irritated because they begin to realize that almost everything you know about the subject is not true about why they're here. Now, what I've learned is being head of the CE5, global CE5 effort. Um, oh, let's go to the next one. It's a very interesting uh, thing that came out uh, not long ago. Uh, it, it's from the Daily Mail in, in the UK, but it was an article about this, uh, this new electronic warfare system. And I actually talked about this 20 some years ago, but they're just now bringing it out. And, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's kind of almost like Star Trek, but it's a, something you can put up that basically knocks out all electronic communication. Um, oh, the next, you have the next one? And uh, it's a, it, it just gives you the idea that if this is being reported in, in the regular media, or even tabloid media, this is at least 30 to 40 years old, this. And it's basically a platform that can float over an area and knock out all electronics. Not only in a city, but over a battlefield or what have you, using pulsed microwaves. Now this is not talking about scalar, this is pulsed microwaves. But when you pulse microwaves in a certain way, it can cross over into this longitudinal effect and it can have an enormously destructive um, result. And this was actually getting reported. So if this is being acknowledged in the media, it means that it's at least five, six, seven generations old. So in other words, this is not state of the art. Anything that's acknowledged in the mainstream media is going to be old, old, old technology. Um, and, the, and the really state of the art stuff is highly classified, compartmented, and unacknowledged. Most of the really amazing stuff. So. This brings us to how do we get out of this conundrum? And if you see the next, put up the next one. I just want to share this. I shared this in my London presentation last month or in September. And this is the French initiative. And you see the date on it. This is by far, we're about to release all of this with a report on the internet. A document ever generated by a government on this subject, urgent, 16 January 2007. The French government had decided to reach out to us to make peaceful contact with the ETs and bypass this entire unacknowledged world of cloak and dagger nonsense. And so through a series of meetings that happened over three or four years, the, this uh, Dr. Moran and his people, a very senior guy, a admiral and PhD scientist, also a medical doctor with the Ministry of Defense. This is an official Ministry of Defense letter to me and a few other people about this project. And what they wanted to do was to have 
the protocols established, and with this document came an entire uh, separate uh, attachment that had all the research and equipment that would be needed uh, to do a friendly diplomatic contact with these civilizations in France. And um, so we cooperated with that. This was something that was not talked about until uh, September. And um, I referred to it some years ago. Those of you may remember, I talked about a major G7 country whose Ministry of Defense was reaching out to us to make peaceful contact. This is it. Um, you know, I'm speaking of it now because that government left, it was Sarkozy, the President Sarkozy. And um, uh, enough time has passed that I feel like I can talk about it with, uh, without too many ruffled feathers. Um, there's still going to be ruffled feathers with this. But importantly, what you have to look at with this document, and, and it's basically an explanation. If you look at the translation, we had expected to do an event sooner and it kept getting delayed. And the delay was because of, as it says, politics. And there were people interfering with this attempt to go out and have a team of folks with the air support, security support, and have, like in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a contact a landing or a near contact event uh, under the official auspices of the Ministry of Defense of France. Now, when we started going back and forth with this communication, of course, everything I do is monitored in real time. The French ambassador to the United States got a very nasty phone call from our intelligence community and saying, what the hell do you think you're doing? And they really cussed him out. And he said, look, we're doing this, so we're a sovereign country. And basically what was said back to him was, don't do it anywhere near US assets or US airspace or US territory or you'll be in big trouble. And the, the French got very irritated by this. They said, we'll be completely within France and it's none of your business. So obviously there are elements within magic in France who have run interference to interfere with this process. Every major country have elements. And so it's very political, it becomes very, very thorny, but the very fact that senior people in the Ministry of Defense of a major G7 country, group of seven, major economic country, would, and a nuclear power, would reach out to make peaceful contact using the close encounters of the fifth kind initiative is by far the most historic thing. And that's why this document, I think is the most important document ever written because it's not classified. I only kept it private because I didn't want to burn bridges to the government that was there. And it did involve all the way up to the president of France, this effort. We actually ended up going, I believe it was in 2010 or 2011 and did a CE5 event <clears throat> that actually had enormous results. And um, the, their military had uh, cordoned off the airspace, directed, and we had a 2,200 acre estate in Brittany. Um, and there were ET craft tracked going over uh, head at over 200,000 kilometers an hour and all kinds of strange phenomenon in the field where we were, um, which the Admiral was there. And now, no one knew that's who he was. This ended up being a demonstration event for the Ministry of Defense people, and not, it was directed by me. And the cover story was that it was a Sea SETI expedition for a weekend. So see, if you sometimes come on these expeditions, there may be other folks there, huh? Get it? Um, nobody knew who he was. He was just a nice gentleman in a plaid shirt. But I mean, that's how these things have to happen. I mean, it wasn't my place to expose who he was. But they were very happy with the results and have learned a lot. And we're continuing to teach them about the concepts of non-locality and consciousness, remote viewing, coherent thought sequencing, electronic interface with thought that the ETs have, how to set up the correct philosophy and conditions for contact, on and on and on. And this is really the core of, of course, why I founded this organization, was to move us away from the brink of war into a time of interplanetary peace and universal peace. But at the same time, we have to understand that an operation like this isn't going on in a vacuum in outer space. It's going on within a world that's enormously dysfunctional, particularly with these national security issues and these uh, sort of spy versus spy 
groups who interfere. And there was enormous interference between 2007 and 2010 trying to stop that process. Um, and it continues to go on. I mean, it turns out there are people who are key involved with the liaison who are actually moles from magic who are there to disrupt events. Infiltrators. So this is what happens. I mean, this is welcome to my life. But, um, and it, that should be of no surprise to anyone. And it was certainly no surprise to me. But ultimately, the fact that there would be a major initiative like this from a government like France for peaceful purposes, as opposed to a warfare or militaristic purposes, is a very positive development. Because I had a lucid dream years ago, before I started these projects, and I tend to, I'm part Cherokee and I have a lot of lucid dreams um, of the future, met my wife that way. Um, and when we were in the future, um, and we were at White Sands, where the first atomic bomb went off. And there was a beautiful event happening. And the US Air Force and government had moved off this dime of either denial or suppression or hoaxing and trying to create this false flag World War III conflict that's completely a hoax. And had decided, yes, we need to pick this other path and make peaceful contact. And a massive government sanctioned CE5 was happening, broad daylight. And this beautiful silver seamless object descended in a bed of a blue sky, landed, and an ancient elder ET came out of it. And this was all broadcast live. The whole world saw it. Now, you know, maybe I mean, that was before I founded CSETI and the Disclosure Project and all this. And, and um, I was maybe in my early 20s when I had that dream, and I'm 60 now. So, you know, it, it's, it's a potential future. But I do believe it's a potential future. And the way it's going to become a real future is for all of us to do that. Because guess what? You know who the leaders are on this? You guys. Not the president. Not the Congress. Disclosure, contact, all of that first has to be the people. We the people. It's going to happen by us banding together, making contact, being enlightened about what we're doing, not going out there with ray guns but doing it for the purpose of an open relationship that's peaceful and enduring between our planet and these other